Hi everybody, my name is Nick Turner and today we're at the Nova Southeastern University Halmos College of Natural Sciences and Oceanography and behind me is the Guy Harvey Oceanographic Center. Uh, I work as a research assistant in the coral, the land-based coral nursery uh, which you will get a tour of today. So because we are an oceanographic center uh, we do a lot of research with ocean species, both coral and fish. This requires the building to have a seawater supply system, which powers all of the wet labs in the building, and we pull this water from a well that exists below the ground 75 feet down. So behind me is a schematic of our building seawater system. It is composed of a raw seawater tank and a clean seawater tank. What we do is we pump the water from a 75 foot deep well that is below the ground, and we pump it into this raw tank that is equipped with protein skimmer, ozonation, and multiple sand filters. We also, to combat elevated levels of phosphate, sometimes drop lanthanum chloride in before we transfer it over. When the water becomes ready and we've determined the water quality is suitable for coral, we will transfer it to the clean seawater system, which is another 5,000 gallon system that also includes phosphate reactors, uh, UV sterilizer, a heat exchanger to keep the temperature stable, uh, and it also pumps this water to the roof of our building where a 550 gallon head tank filled with bio balls helps to ensure we cycle the water prior to use in research. So on the back patio here, we have multiple different systems being used for research. The ones located behind me are 1,000 gallon tanks that are separated in individual setups. Our fisheries research lab uses those when they collect fish using just typical hook and line. Uh, and they bring the fish back and they rear them to analyze stable isotopes and also sometimes diet preparation. The tanks you can see behind me right now are used by our coral reproduction lab. Uh, this lab brings back corals from the ocean and collects their gametes when they release at night. And then they use those gametes and fertilize them to produce planula larvae, uh, which they then grow and use for experimental research. There are four separate tanks. Each one is a standalone system uh, for which they use our clean seawater supply to maintain water quality. Uh, welcome to the land-based coral nursery. Uh, what you see behind me are eight tanks. Each of them consists of 450 gallons of water. They are all connected and drained into a common sump. Uh, so each one of these tanks out here uh, is under South Florida sunlight. So above me is a 40% shade cloth that helps to reduce the, the intense sun. Um, and we found that that actually was not enough because these corals are mainly growing in 25 to 30 feet of water. So we actually had to add more shade cloth to the top of the tanks to uh, limit the sunlight they're receiving. So in the first tank here, we have one of the most common and dominant corals found in the uh, ocean in Broward County, uh, and it's uh, Sideraestria sideria. It's a bouldering coral with very small polyps and grows relatively slowly compared to some of the branching forms. Um, the corals we have in this tank were used in a nitrate loading experiment that was completed in mid-January. Uh, so we kept everything we were not using for analysis in hopes that they will recover and we will be able to fragment them and use them in future research. Uh, so in the tank beside me, we have two different types of brain coral. Uh, both of these corals were actually grown from larvae uh, or small colonies that were brought in on other corals. Uh, we don't have a quantity large enough to do any research with them yet, um, but we do keep them growing in here in hopes that one day it'll be large enough to fragment them to use them for something. Okay, the tank beside me here is filled with Montastria cavernosa. This is a large polyp stony coral. Um, it has some of the largest polyps out of any of the corals you will see out in the ocean here in Broward County. Um, it predominantly photosynthesizes with its symbiotic algae, but it's also known to eat small animals, uh, mainly plankton uh, and amphipods. Um, the, the species we were, the specimens we have in the tank here were used in an experiment with nitrate loading, the same as the Sideraestria colonies you saw earlier. Um, so we do have some small fragments that are left over that we hope will recover. Um, but we do have leftover portions of colonies um, from when we sampled originally to make the fragments for that research. Um, so there are some larger colonies here that we are allowing to grow and we'll eventually be fragmenting them for further research. So in the tank here, we have one of the branching corals that are found in Broward County uh, and also in the Atlantic. Uh, this is Acropora cervicornis, or the staghorn coral. Um, everybody knows this coral because it was recently uplisted to threatened on the Endangered Species Act. 
Um, our offshore uh, dive team actually maintains a nursery off the coast of Fort Lauderdale here where they grow this uh, and use it for restoration to sites that they deem suitable for, for a crop rook. Um, what we have here are a couple fragments that were broken off during uh, transport or collection for other research. Um, so we glue them down to tiles and allow them to grow. This is a very fast growing coral. It can sometimes reach four centimeters to six centimeters in a month if conditions are appropriate. Uh, so this tank is different from the others you've already seen in, in a way that we have to increase the flow uh, using power heads. Um, because a cropper is a branch in coral and it is known to like higher amounts of flow, we actually have four of the largest Corellias you can buy in this tank along with the flow that's produced by the adductors that are the returns from the sump. Um, so this increased flow actually allows the acropora to uh, grow in a way that it would on the uh, natural reef setting. So the nursery is also uh, able to be rented out. Each tank can be rented uh, by a lab. Uh, and what they do is, in, in the instance of this tank here, these tiles were actually placed out on the reef for one year. Uh, and they're studying what actually settles on them in that time period. So this is our Secor experimental system. Uh, we actually have 30 identical systems built in 15 separate tables. Each one of the system has a water bath where the tanks sit inside and it's chilled by a large chiller. Uh, and in the winter months we actually have to heat it to maintain proper temperature. Um, so the reason we can't actually run the water through filtration, we have to put them in water baths, is because this is used for pollutants. Um, we can elevate temperature, we can do sex steroid research, elevated levels of nitrate, um, and in the future we're looking to use this for petroleum toxicity research. Uh, so every one of these systems can be used as a replicate uh, and we can do up to 30 at one time. Okay, once again, my name is Nick Turner with Nova Southeastern University's Halmos College of Natural Sciences and Oceanography. I'd like to thank you guys for uh, watching the video and uh, getting a quick glimpse of what we do here at the Oceanographic Center. Uh, we think it's always very important to be as sustainable as possible and to do everything we can to protect the future of our reefs in South Florida. And if you would like to make a donation to support the research we do at the land-based coral nursery, please follow the link. Uh, and again, I would like to thank Reef to Reef for coming out to check this or to make this video, and uh, all you guys for checking it out. Thanks.